problems, pain, and suffering are complicated things. The troubles we face can affect our health, our finances, even our relationships. Our problems, pain, and suffering can preoccupy us during the day. They can, toss, uh, they can cause you to toss and turn all night long. Sometimes your problems, pain, and suffering can even change your entire life. They bring stress and worry and fear and sorrow. What's worse, you can never know why your pain or suffering or problems are happening. In Scripture, problems, pain, and suffering can come from your own, uh, the result of your own words or actions. They can come from the result of someone else's words or actions. They might just happen because you live in a broken, sinful world. It might come from the devil and his demons. And it might come from God himself. You just never know why something is happening to you. Even when you think you might know, you might not ever know. Think of the story of Joseph. That's why we heard this uh, text in Hebrews today teach us that whatever your problem, pain, or suffering is, just consider it coming from God. Treat it as discipline. The Lord is at work in your life for good to, to strengthen you in your faith. Otherwise, you just never know why something is happening. King David had his own fair share of problems, pain, and suffering as well. If you remember some of his life story that we have in Scripture, he had enemies that were constantly threatening him. He had a broken and mixed up family that caused a lot of stress for him. And his own sinful nature led him into terrible sin and great shame. It was, done, it was some, uh, during some unknown problem, pain, or suffering that King David wrote Psalm 13. Psalm 13 is a heartfelt, emotional, agonizing prayer to the Lord. Pull out the, the handout if you want. Let's take a look at Psalm 13. It's only six verses long. It's a powerful psalm, and let's read it responsively, uh, verse by verse. I'll read the odd. Please read the even. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. But as for me, I have and will trust in your steadfast love. My heart will rejoice in your salvation. Note the emotion and the anguish in the first two verses of this psalm. You have the emphasis with the four how longs. How long, O Lord? How long will you hide your face and forget me forever and wrestle with my thoughts? And I have to deal with this every day in my heart. And my enemies, they're triumphing over me. There's a lot of anguish and emotion in those first two verses. King David feels like the Lord has forgotten about him. He feels like God is out there somewhere, distant and uncaring and not listening nor paying attention. He thinks that his problems and his pain and his suffering are never going to end. He thinks he's at the end of his rope. He doesn't understand what's going on. It makes no sense to him. He thinks that his problems, pain, and suffering are going to crush him. Psalm 13 is a prayer of pain. It's a psalm of lament. A psalm of lament or a prayer of lament is a prayer to God for help in times of trouble. It's a specific kind of prayer and psalm that we find in scriptures. A prayer of lament is an emotional prayer full of anguish. It teaches us that we can bring our questions and our pain 
to the Lord, that, that the Lord cares about those things. It teaches us that prayer is a, a safe, pra- uh, safe place where you can talk about um, your feelings, your, your frustrations, your exp- um, exasperations, even your anger. You can tell him your hurt, your worries, and your disappointments. A prayer of lament is an act of faith. God the Father has invited you into his presence to talk to him and to cry out to him. Psalm 13 is an example of how to do it. But notice that in Psalm 13, David doesn't get stuck in his problem, his pain, and his suffering. He doesn't get stuck in his anger or his bitterness or or his disappointment, even the unknowns. He asks the Lord for help. King David trusts that God is his father in heaven who has promised to help him. David prays specifically that the good Lord will light up his eyes, that he will be able to see God and his mercy at work. Take a look at verses 3 and 4. This is really the prayer that David is asking in the psalm. Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes. Lest I sleep the sleep of death, lest my enemy say I have prevailed over him, lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. You know what King David is doing there? He asks the Lord for help, and then he waits. That's the hardest part of prayer, isn't it? Waiting. That's the hardest part of going through problems, pain, and suffering is waiting. In prayer, we ask God to consider us and to answer us, and then we wait. In prayer, we ask God to light up our eyes like King David, and then we wait. We wait for God's reply. We wait for his answer. We wait for him to work as he promised to do. We wait For his good timing. Scripture teaches us that we are to wait for the Lord. Remember one of the Psalms says, wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart, and wait for the Lord. This waiting for the Lord is usually referred to as patient endurance in Scripture. Patient endurance is our attitude when we are in the midst of problems, pain, and suffering. Patient endurance is a posture of faith in the midst of suffering and as you wait for the Lord to answer your prayers. But don't misunderstand patient endurance. It is not passive. It is active. You are actively trusting in God and his promises as you wait for his help. You are holding on to his word and promises as your strength, as the solid rock on which you stand when you're going through problems, pain, and suffering. That's patient endurance. It's active. You are actively trusting in God. However that works for you, whether you have to memorize some Bible verses to give you that comfort and strength, you put them on a post-it note somewhere where you always see them, you're always keeping them in front of you. That's waiting for the Lord. That's patient endurance. It's active trust in God. You remain faithful to the Lord day in and day out until the Lord answers your prayer. Because you've already turned to him for all good things. You know that he is your father in heaven who will help you. You know that God cares. You know that he will work, that he is good and that he has promised to work in your life. So until that happens, you wait. You patiently endure. You actively trust in God and his promises. That's what King David was doing in Psalm 13. In fact, he even talks about how he is waiting, his patient endurance. That's what the last two verses are. If you go back and take a look at verse 5 and 6, this is David's definition of patient endurance. But as for me, I have and will trust 
in your steadfast love. My heart will rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he has been good to me. That's patient endurance. It trusts in God's steadfast love. It rejoices in the salvation that we have in the Lord Jesus. It even sings to the Lord. Patient endurance knows and believes that God is good. Do you remember one of the things that we learned last week in Psalm 136? <coughs> Excuse me. Is that when you look back over your life and you see how God has worked in your past and how he's made everything work for good to get you where you are today, that gives you strength for the day, knowing that God has worked and that he is good and that whatever you're up against today, nothing changes as far as God's concerned. He still loves you. He's still your father in heaven. All the promises are intact and he's at work for your good. So whatever he's, he's doing through the problem, pain, or suffering, you can trust him. You've seen him work in your past, so you can trust him for today. Patient endurance is active trust in God and his goodness. You know that his love for you is seen in Christ the Savior. You know that he's your father in heaven. The Holy Spirit is right there with you. You can trust God's promises and remain faithful through whatever the problem, pain, or suffering may be. That's waiting for the Lord. That's patient endurance. You know, we have a perfect example of that in the Lord Jesus. We are in the midst of Lent, and we know that Jesus had problems, pain, and suffering. Remember the prophecy from Isaiah? He was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He was despised and rejected by men. He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He was stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. Jesus had pain and sorrows and, and burdens. Jesus patiently endured throughout his life. He looked to God's word. He remained faithful every moment of every day. And his pain and suffering had eternal weight to it. Your sin and your guilt and your eternal punishment was placed on him. That's a heavy burden that only the Son of God could carry. And he carried it all the way to the cross where he was put to death for us and our salvation. His suffering brings us all the gifts of salvation. Your sins are forgiven because Jesus remained faithful. He patiently endured all the way to the cross. You have peace with God. You have eternal life. You know that God is your Father in heaven. You know that heaven is your home. You know that God provides for you. All those promises come into play because you trust in Christ the Savior. Jesus, the one who patiently endured for us and our salvation, is now right there with you, alongside of you, to comfort you and to strengthen you as you patiently endure whatever it might be you're going through. And the major way that God strengthens you in your faith is through his word and promises. Here's, a, here's an, some examples of God's promises that strengthen you as you patiently endure. Here's one from the Old Testament, Lamentations. Let's read this together. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Here's one from the New Testament. Cast your cares upon the Lord because he cares about you. Here's one from the Psalms. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The Lord has given you many promises like these so that you can hold on to, that you can learn, that you can memorize, that you can keep in front of you as you wait for the Lord, as you patiently endure whatever it is you're up against. If you're, going, if you're up against something and you need a list of some of God's promises, send me an email and I will send you some of God's promises that you can hang on to. In Psalm 13, 
King David was up against some kind of a problem or pain or suffering that, that caused him to write this psalm. And Psalm 13 may have even been one of the Gethsemane prayers that Jesus was praying that night when he was betrayed. But it certainly is a prayer that we can pray in our lives today. It's a prayer that invites you to bring your problems, pain, and suffering to the Lord. It's a prayer of lament. It's an emotional prayer. It teaches us that, that the good Lord cares about whatever we're feeling and whatever we're going through and whatever our thoughts are when we're in the midst of the problems, pain, and suffering. That's what a prayer of lament is all about. But you don't get stuck in the problem. You, you turn to the Lord and his promises, and that gives you strength. It, Psalm 13 teaches us to patiently endure, to wait for the Lord, to remain faithful as we trust in God's goodness to us. We know him, we trust him, we know his love for us in Christ, and we have all kinds of promises that he makes to us. You can patiently endure and wait for the Lord. Amen.